Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, uh, Star Wars is dead. <laughs> Apparently, it was it was killed, and I even saw a, a funeral in, of course, a live stream. So uh, that's it, right? <laughs> like we're not gonna talk about it anymore because it's oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's just it's just it was the canned phrase of the week. It's like ooh. Somebody saw Star Wars Episode 3. They said, this is the one where the Star Wars franchise dies. And then, oh shit, it actually happened. Although, weren't they saying that, like, they're like, ooh, in this Episode 3, they're going to literally say that the Force energy is female. And that didn't happen. You just got a couple of lesbians acting like lesbians and really bad acting. I haven't seen it, but it, it cracks me up because they're like, how do we... How do we let the audience know that these two characters are the younger version of the older characters? Let's have them have the same ridiculous hairdo like their entire life. It's like, okay, fine, whatever, fucking that, fine. So, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is, um, uh, it's always annoying, like, any time I talk about any female creator, there's always some, like, Oh, uh, Zach has a crush. Okay, Anna Senti, absolutely. Uh, Sasha from Casually Comics, absolutely. But so does everybody. Everybody has a crush on Anna Senti. Everybody has a crush on Sasha from uh, Casually Comics. She did a she did a interview with this guy. Uh, I th was his name Ram God or was uh, that the name of the of the comic? Either way, like, <laughs> I got jealous. Like, for the first time in decades, like, I was like, what is this weird emotion I'm feeling? Um, but anyway, yeah, like, I have crushes on the same women that literally everyone has crushes on. Have you heard of Anna Senti? Are you aware of her existence? You have a crush on her. Um, but uh, it's it's really dumb. It's like, uh, oh, you talk about Heather Ontos. Zach's got a crush. Uh, no, I find her repellent. Also, I've had to talk a few black guys <laughs> down because they see a blonde white woman, especially one gaining weight, and they're like, she's a 10 million out of one. Like, no, no. This is a very average looking woman if you lived and grew up in the Midwest. Like, dial it way down. So, uh, saying that, uh, I'm kind of, uh, heading off the, uh, criticisms like, but you say that, but you do that, which I've been getting for the last two weeks when I'm complaining that people are now participating or happy that good things are failing because it fits their narrative. And they're like, but Zach, you give bad review. That's wow. That's <laughs> literally has nothing to do with what we are talking about. Uh, but I, I like doing the dumb guy voice. I remember Joe Casada one time said, everything sounds dumb uh, if you say it in a dumb guy voice. Wait, sorry. Let me rewind and do that again. Everything sounds dumb if you do it in a dumb guy voice. By the way, <laughs> you see the way I just emphasized the, the letter D in dumb? Uh, I noticed something also. Whenever uh, uh, Sasha from Casually Comics says Dick Grayson, she really emphasizes the D in Dick. She says, like, Dick Grayson. It's like, settle down. Uh, but anyway, uh, so, uh, not TLDR. No, that is, yeah, TLDR. I'm driving and I'm a little distracted. But anyway, um, anti-SJWs don't hate Disney Star Wars. They have a crush on it. Now, I've talked about this concept of uh, Jolie Laid, or however you pronounce it. I just say Jolie Laid in my uh, head. It's French. It means beautiful, ugly. And if you know who the actress Sandra Bernhardt is, that's that's it. It's a woman where the first time you look at her, you go, Ugh. and then you go, okay, one more look. Ugh. Okay, just another look. Ugh. And it's like, after a while, you just have to realize, like, yes, she looks a little strange. Yes, she has a lot of features that would typically be described as unattractive, but you put it all together and everyone, like, that's another one. That's, I, I always felt 
Like, I was the only one who had a crush on Sandra Bernhardt. Every, every, now, she's not as famous, you know, not as well known as Anna Senti. No, I mean, nowadays, it's understandable if you just don't know who Sandra Bernhardt is. But, you know, 80s, she was like a edgy comedian. Then 90s, she was in Hudson Hawk and Roseanne and like, certain generations know about her and I'm always shocked because every time I was like oh yeah Sandra Bernhardt like a guy you would never expect to even know who she was he's like oh yeah oh yeah Sandra Bernhardt and it's it's, it's just the weirdest thing because you look at her and you go you look at the indi- individual features and you're like nope 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 you put it all together you're like that's it I, I don't know why but it works and um that's what Disney Star Wars is to anti-SJWs. Like, I don't watch entire live streams because I hate them, but I will jump in for a few minutes and their eyes are sparkling like they are anime characters. They are so fucking excited to talk about Disney Star Wars, which I tried to watch episode one of Acolyte I did not find it especially woke or DEI. I just found it incredibly fucking boring. Like I said, the acolyte is like your mom, your gay aunt, and your gay aunt's girlfriend of the week were handed $200 million to make a Star Wars movie, and they have no interest. (laughs) And it, it doesn't mean anything to them. And they don't know the characters, and they say that in the interviews, but they have like magical lesbian force fields that protect them from other things. So I've seen, you know, oh, Star Wars is dead. Oh, wow. The prophecy, (laughs) the prophecy is true. The canned phrase prophecy is true. But then the other thing I hear is that uh, uh, Star Wars, uh, Disney regrets the purchase. And if they, if they tried to sell it, they, they couldn't sell it. They'd have to take it to the pawn shop. And I'm like, okay, Stop. This is what I call YouTube poisoning. This is when you watch too many live streams and you start to think unreasonable things are reasonable. I mentioned it. I have a friend and he used to listen to a bunch of, you know, anti-SJW channels and he just got sick of it. Like, I don't know, like two or three years ago and he just stopped. And uh, so sometimes I'd be like, hey, did you hear the thing about DC? He's like, what, is a character gay? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, that's literally the only thing. That's the only news escaping the comic book industry to normies. It's like, oh, another character is gay. But he recently mentioned that he started watching them again. I'm like, what the hell? You said you said you hated them. You said th- they were just spinning people up. He's like, eh, you know, they got some good points. And then, like, he, he uh, he's taking American Airlines. They have to reschedule. You know, those long lines you see in the news. And he's like, yeah, they're probably going to go out of business because of this. And I'm like, okay, boom. That's, that's YouTube poisoning. That's, that's YouTube poisoning, escaping, just talking about geek stuff. And now you're like, why is that always like, why is it always like, this is a massive, like, uh, 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 I did a community post a few days ago. Perhaps you saw it. And it started off where, 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 where I was like, spare me your goo goo gaga routine pretending like you've never heard of spinoffs. Um, and then the guy, I just got a comment, very long comment, very like mature and I really appreciate it. So, um, uh, uh, nice to hear. But, um, in the middle, he was kind of talking about, it's like this, um, this movie had too high of a budget. Wait, I shouldn't, he was nice. I shouldn't do that voice. Um, uh, by the way, just a sidebar. Uh, I was watching some clips from Tropic Thunder and, uh, what's his name? The guy who plays Barry, I don't know why, but he does, like, this weird voice. Uh, I guess because they didn't give him, like, really funny lines or... He's just, like, the, the, the assistant to Tom Cruise's character. But he has this voice, and, like, I was dying. The voice was so funny. Let me see if I can do it. It's like... Well, I can't do it. <laughs> but but it's like they gave him nothing. Like, no funny lines, no pratfalls, nothing. And he, But he's, like, a funny guy in a room full of funny guys and he has no good lines uh so he just came up with like i never noticed how funny the voice he used 
I think it was because when I first saw the movie, I didn't know who he was, so I just thought that was his voice, and then I kind of forgot about it, because I don't think, I don't think Tropic Thunder is, like, that great. Supposedly, Kevin Hart was supposed to play the black guy in it, and they just got, like, this Joe Schmo black guy who's, like, not very good. If he would have been in it, I think I would have liked it, but I was just like, eh. Um, but anyway, like, there's this thing, like, I, I was like, are you a studio accountant? <laughs> like, if you're not a studio accountant, like, why... Why does it bother you if... Okay, yeah, if it would have been... Pro, like, eh, kind of, but not really. And it just feels like it's it's another bit of YouTube poison. It's like, the, the, the budget was too high. And you are? <laughs> are you a producer? Like, wh why does it bother you if you, the budget is too high? It was definitely on the screen. Although I have to say, I saw this movie, The Outpost. It was about a uh, battle in Afghanistan five million dollars and it looks amazing and they well I mean they only really have yeah they only have like they have one they have one actor where you'd be like you instantly recognize him it's a uh, Scott Eastwood and then they have another guy who's been like a character actor in a bunch of things you'd recognize his face but you wouldn't know his name but yeah so they, they saved a lot of money they just found good actors but nobody was really that famous but you kind of look at that you're like wait that was five million dollars so, yeah, so, I mean, there is that aspect, and I think a lot of genre stuff is going to be uh, very affordable. Um, I mean, even with the Bad Boys franchise, when it came back after being gone for, like, almost 20 years, they, they're, they're like, $100 million, that's all you're getting. And you could tell, you could tell, the, the action scenes were not huge like they were in, specifically, Bad Boys 2, but it was still good. So, yeah, in one aspect, yeah, I understand, but also, like, I don't care, like... Furiosa looked great, and it was an awesome experience seeing it in the theaters. But um, getting back to Star Wars, like, uh, one of the things, I had an assumption that I was wrong about, because I always get hit with stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, I always get hit with, it's like, dumb guy voice. Well, if you think it's woke, then why did you buy it? It's like, because I have to review it, like, because <laughs> I, uh, what, like, no, like, the point is, I go review it, and then you decide whether, but then I go to some of the videos talking about episode three of The Acolyte, and, like, it's clear that almost everyone in the comments watched the episode, which means all of the anti-SJWs who said, next, the next episode, Star Wars dies. Everything is over. Like, you helped them. You, you, and then it's also clear that, like, everyone has a Disney Plus subscription because they're mentioning stuff in the episode that wasn't mentioned in the review. And it's like, oh... Because uh, then another thing is like, oh, they spent uh, $4 billion, but they've only made like $1.5 after 10 years. This is a massive failure. Maybe if Disney was a lemonade stand and they did literally one thing, but there's also, I mean, just at my level of having a business, like, you would be surprised how awesome losing tens of thousands of dollars is if you get to write it off your taxes or having a, a, a purchase that you get to amortize over 15 years and it helps you in a myriad of ways. So if you want to look at just box office, it's not great, but I mean, it's typical to make large purchases and take decades to start turning a profit. I mean, but they have all the other things. The other thing is there's a lot of like dunking on a uh, Oh, this one has worse, uh, worse uh, ratings than the other Star Wars. But every Star Wars show that comes out is the number one show on Disney, which makes people just kind of like, eh, it wasn't that great, but in two months, another thing. So they just, they just keep their subscription. And that is very successful. So you went from movies where, you know, you, know, you spend $400 million, to maybe make a profit of 100 million and then 
you you kind of go, I could spend half as much, make a mini series, and then that kicks the can down the road for how many subscribers are there to Disney Plus? I'm not even going to say because it's just going to be a stupid guess off the top of my head. 20 million subscribers? So you kick the can down the road where they like, oh, you know, there's always kind of a new thing and you know, the kids, they watch these shows like uh, Bluey or whatever. So, eh, we'll keep it. And I I honestly thought like most of the anti-SJW uh, specifically like the live stream Star Wars community, I honestly thought like almost none of them had Disney Plus subscriptions. I thought with the thing with the uh, the, the Gina, what's her, what's her name? Carano. I thought like they were just done. And I thought they watched the YouTube channels because that was their only way to find out about it because they just wanted to make sure it was bad. But it's like, no, no, you like it. You like when they hire a thick-necked lesbian. You like that she used to work for uh, Harvey Weinstein. You like that she hired her really ugly girlfriend or wife or whatever. You like that all, you like all the things. Like I said, when put together, each individual feature, you're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. You put it all together, you're like, oh yeah, that's it, that's it. And I don't know, there's not, like, I don't have a, a thesis like, you're bad, <laughs> you know? But it's just like, looking at the evidence, looking at all of it, you're like, yeah, that's a crush. I recognize a crush. And I also recognize having a crush on a beautiful, ugly woman. Where the first time you look, you go, ah! And you go, uh, just one more look. And another one, and another one. Oh, okay, you got a crush. So there's, you know, attractive women you have crushes on. And there's technically unattractive ones. But I think those crushes... It's funny when you forget a crush. Like, uh... uh Oh, I'm blanking on her name. Natalie, 10,000 Maniacs. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. I had the hugest crush on her in the world. And I didn't think about it for like 30 years. But uh, one of her songs, Natalie Merchant. Uh, one of her songs got, uh, you know, in the, the algorithm on my uh, YouTube music. And like, it's it was just a flood. Because like crushes are intense, man. <laughs> like, they are intense. Crushes will get you to watch a six-hour live stream every day where it's like, oh, can we talk about her neck? I hope he mentions her neck. It's so thick. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's incredibly thick, and it doesn't even look like a neck. Oh, I saw the meanest comment. It was hilarious. Um, uh, somebody said... <laughs> Blanking on everyone's name. The lesbian, Leslie Headland. They said, uh, Leslie Headland looks like you were bored in class and you drew a face on your knee. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. See, that's fun. That's fun. I, I don't have a crush on Leslie Headland or Disney Star Wars, but there is aspects. Like, but the thing is, the, the way it's always justified to me, it's like, we're in a war and we've been abused and this is our way of fighting. It's like, nah, not really. This is a crush. I recognize the signs of a crush. This is a crush. You got a crush on Disney Star Wars. There's something about it. All the features are ugly, but when you put it together and it's a funny face drawn on a knee <laughs> in ballpoint pen, you're like, that, that's it. That's what I like. So, uh, just, uh, now you know that. <laughs> now, when you're in, uh, going into hour eight of, uh, is, is, is Star Wars woke? Yeah, it's woke. You know why you're there. You know why you're there. This isn't any culture war stuff. This is, it's a crush. You have a crush on Disney Star Wars. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.